everybody welcome back to the shop if you've been reading the blog lately um, you're probably aware that I've been working on a reproduction of a William and Mary Bible box um, with a small group from my local woodworking club the Central Jersey Woodworkers Association um, and I haven't really um, said too much about it on the blog or the podcast because um, it's a pretty simple project um, and you know we've pretty much covered all the construction techniques um, for something like this on the podcast already. I mean, it is pretty simple. Um, the sides are just, you know, dovetailed together with through dovetails. The bottom is simply nailed on. Um, there's a simple molding that runs uh, around three sides to cover up the bottom. And the top is just a single wide board um, with uh, a molded profile on three edges. So there's really nothing complicated about it um, other than perhaps the veneer and the banding on the front um, if you haven't ever done anything like that before. and um, Since I'm not really, um, you know, before this project, since I really had never done anything, any serious veneering before, um, I didn't think this was the project to be podcasting that. So um, perhaps at a later date, I'll, I'll do something like that. But um, so the, the woodworking really, all that's left on this now is gonna be to turn and install the feet. Um, but before I do that, I wanna go ahead and uh, install the lock because um, I think now is going to be an easier time for me to go ahead and do that. Um, locks for something like this could be several different styles. Um, you can have service mount lock. Um, not very common on a small box like this, but there are larger pieces that would have, might have had surface mount locks. Um, half mortise locks, which is what I'm going to be using, um, and full mortise locks. Um, the main difference between a half mortise lock and a full mortise lock being that in a half mortise lock, um, part of the side of the lock shows on the inside of the box. So only um, this section of the lock actually gets set into a mortise as opposed to a full mortise lock, um, which would be more close to the, the mortise and tenon joint where the mortise would be cut, chopped down into the piece with a chisel and the lock body, the whole lock body would drop into the mortise and all you would see would be um, the top of the lock plate. Um, I'm going to be using a half mortise lock, so I thought I would go through how to put those on, put one of these on, because it can be a little bit tricky, um, especially when you get into some of the larger locks. Um, so I thought I would just go ahead and talk about how to install a half mortise lock. So when you purchase a lock, typically you're going to get the lock body, in this case again a half mortise lock, you're going to get what's called a salvage. Um, this is the, the piece that mounts to the lid of the box um, that actually gets goes into the lock body and that's what holds the lid locked shut. You'll get the hardware to mount the salvage and the um, lock to the box um, and you'll typically get one or two keys, usually two. Uh, the other thing you want to pick up um, is going to be some type of escutcheon. There's a lot of different styles. Um, this is a surface mount escutcheon. Just gets um, tacked to the surface with these escutcheon pins. Um, there are also escutcheons that actually get mortised into the keyhole. Um, so there are, there are a bunch of different styles so you just pick something that looks good to you um, and that fits with the style of the piece that you're building. Um, the hardest part about fitting a lock like this is going to be the layout because typically the pin here in the, uh, that you see that the key goes on is not centered in the lock body and in fact I measured my own here and you, you may even be able to see it by eye it's a little bigger on this side um, it's actually a sixteenth of an inch more on this side from this side of the lock body to the center of the pin 
than it is on this side of the lock body to the center of the pin. And this is pretty common, and in larger locks, it's even uh, uh, more noticeable. But that pin for the key is very rarely centered on the lock body. Um, and I think that's where most people have the most problems. So uh, let's lay this out so we can cut the mortise. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the center of this dimension of your box here. Now, you could go ahead and measure and find the center, and this, this box is 18 and 3 quarters, so 9 and 3 eighths would be my center. Um, but I had already found the center when I did the banding, and in fact, where this banding, where the grain changes direction in the banding is actually um, the center of my box. Uh, and that's important because if that grain change is off by a little bit, you know, the, the goal was to center it on the box, but let's say that grain change is off by say a sixteenth of an inch to the left. Well, you're going to want to line up your keyhole with that even though it's not centered, even though it's a sixteenth of an inch off. The reason being, if you go to measure and you now end up a sixteenth of an inch off the other way, now your keyhole is actually uh, an eighth of an inch off um, from what appears to be the center of the box. Um, and it's really gonna look bad. So um, even if this, this center line here where the banding joins wasn't perfectly centered, and it is, it is fairly close in this case, but if it wasn't, I would wanna line the keyhole up with it because to the eye, it's going to look like center because that was the intention with this. Um, so um, when you do something like this, if you have this sort of pattern in the middle um, that sort of changes direction in the middle, um, line everything up with that um, and that's going to be the easiest way to go. So I'm just going to take a square and I'm going to uh, extend this line down. So that's my center line. Now, the most important thing, like I said, is for me to get this pin centered on that keyhole. And I also want to get the top of the lock flush with the top of the box. So what I've done is I, I turned the box on its back to make this a little easier for myself. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, the point of that pin, that the keyhole pin has a little point on it. So I'm going to get that point to line up right on that center line that I just drew. I'm gonna flush it up, flush up the top of the lock body with the top of the top of the box there. Hold it in place and give it a little tap with a hammer. And that's going to leave a mark from the pin that I can then go ahead and deepen just a bit and adjust if I need to. If I need to move it left or right at all. And I'll use an awl. I don't know if you can see it. So deepen it with an awl right there. There's a hole now. And I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole. And I'm going to drill that hole to the size of the pin, which is an eighth of an inch, um, so that I get a good tight fit um, of the, the keyhole, the, of the key in there. Because then I'm going to set it on the inside of the box and I'll use the lock body itself to transfer out the mortise. Okay, now that I've got that hole drilled through to the inside of the box, I've just propped the box up on uh, uh, an old flannel sheet 
um, to keep the molding off to make it protect the front of it and make it a little easier for me. And I can drop the key into that hole and you can see that registers the lock now so that it won't move. And I can transfer uh, my marks. And what I want to do is the first part of the mortise, you can think of this sort of as as three mortises because we need a mortise for the lock mechanism in here, we need a mortise for the plate, and we need a mortise for the top of the plate here. So by dropping this in, we're going to do this in steps. So the first thing I want to transfer out is the position of this top mortise here by making a mark on either side of that plate. Now I'm going to transfer those marks across the top just using a, a tri-square. And then I'll set a marking gauge to the width, to the, the, uh, the depth of that mortise, that brass plate. And I'll use that gauge to describe the extent of the mortise on the top of the box. So now with the top mortise marked, I'll go ahead and I'll strike it in and I'm just going to carefully pare this material out and we'll make some paring cuts here and what I'm doing is actually using my shoulder to push this chisel. And you may have read about this technique. Um, by holding the chisel here and then holding um, here into my shoulder, it allows me to push very forcefully, but by pulling back with this hand, I'm really able to control that cut very precisely. So I can just pare this material out. A couple little light cuts here. Now I'll turn the box back on the front again. Pair that material off. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. We can always tweak the fit later. So now that that's in place and the lock mechanism is sitting flush to the inside of the box, you take a pencil or a scribe, a gauge, a uh, awl, and go ahead and trace the lock mechanism, the, the, the lock body, inside of the lock body itself. And that'll let us know where that mortise needs to be.
baby. You filming? Mm -hmm. that fits well we can take a knife and scribe the outline of the plate here and cut in for that and that'll be our final piece to this mortise get a marking gauge on this to really scribe how deep to go here. So your best bet is to kind of eyeball it and then just keep checking the fit um, until, until the lock is flush. If it's not flush, trim a little bit more off and just keep checking it because there's really no way to, to get a gauge in there to scribe that thickness of that brass plate. good fit. All right, let's mark for the screw holes. So here's a little tip um, when you have to drill for small screws like for this lock in tight spaces. Uh, I don't have a lot of room here. Uh, it's not enough because of the, the width of this box, I don't have enough room to get my hand drill in here. Um, and I don't have handheld gimlets, which would be ideal for this job. But most people usually have one of these precision screwdriver sets laying around from uh, the drugstore. You know, you use them for tightening up the screws on your eyeglasses and things like that. Um, well, you can take one of these and uh, match it up approximately to the size of the screw that you're going to be using. And they actually make a pretty decent brad awl. You can sort of shove it in there and, and open up a spot, a space for the screw, and get yourself a hole that those little screws will grab in. works just as good, almost as good, not quite as good as a brad awl. But if you don't have a brad awl, give these a try. You'd be surprised how well they'll work for shallow, little shallow holes for small screws like these. Now with the lock fit, we can go ahead and uh, make sure we can get the key in there. So remember this hole wasn't originally drilled the right size for the key, it was drilled um, just to barely fit the pin. So I've removed the, um, the lock and I now need to make that hole big enough that the key can get through. Um, so the idea is to take a look at your escutcheon, um, if you're using a surface mount escutcheon like this, and make the hole just the slightest bit bigger than that hole for the key, then it'll be covered up by the escutcheon. If you're using a mortised-in escutcheon, 
um, you're going to need to be a little bit more careful. Obviously, you don't want to make it too much bigger than the hole. Um, you want to make it to fit that mortise in the scutcheon. Um, so this one worked out to about 5 16 So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bore a 5 16 inch hole. Now with the hole board large enough for the key to get through, you need to enlarge that hole around the escutcheon. So I'm just going to line everything up, get the escutcheon in place, and trace the keyhole of the escutcheon. Now I can go and cut that out with my bow saw. I've installed the lock back in to see the key fits. Everything seems to work. Put the escutcheon in. Just hold it in place for now. And we may have to do a little bit of trimming. You'll see a little bit of wood poking out here and there um, that we can trim away behind that escutcheon. But all in all, I think it looks works pretty good. So I think now we can go ahead and mark for the selvage plate on the lid. So I've gone ahead and installed the hinges for this next step because I need to know where everything's going to line up. So I'm going to put the selvage into the lock and lock it in place. Once I have everything lined up and it looks good right where I want it, I'm going to close the lid and I'm going to lean down on it. What that's going to do, there's two pins, two small little knobs here on the top of the selvage. Those two little points make marks in the top of the lid to show me where to mortise the lid for the selvage. So that's what I'm going to do next. So because I'm using uh, snipe hinges uh, on my box. Once they're installed, you can't take them out. So I am uh, I turn the box over, I've got a soft cloth down, and I can reset this where it needs to go based on those two little pinholes that you can sort of see there. Um, so I'll set those pins back in that holes. And I'm just going to use my knife to go ahead and scribe the outline of the selvage and then once I have the outline scribed I can excavate the shallow mortise for it. So again I'm using that technique here where I'm pushing the chisel with my shoulder. I'm guiding with my lower hand here and I'm holding the chisel to my shoulder with my upper hand and I'm just leaning into the handle of the chisel. And you'd be surprised how much power and control you can put into 
your chisel cut this way, um, it really does, it provides a lot of control and a lot of power and you can get a lot deeper than you might think with a lot of control. So I'll make a couple of passes this way to deepen this mortise for the selvage before I go and install it. So in addition to um, chiseling out, once I got the mortise deep enough, I went ahead um, <clears throat> and bored holes for those pins to sit in so that because the pins sit deeper than the bottom of the mortise. And I also went, drilled holes for the mounting screws and uh, mounted the selvage. Everything fits nice and tight. Time for the moment of truth. So everything seems to line up. Put the key in. Locks up nice and tight and opens easily.